Hello, I'm Kelly Austin, author of Learning Through Virtual Discussion, the blueprint for creating dynamic, synchronous discussions online. And I want to welcome you to the Learning Through Virtual Discussion Overview. I am so honored that you're taking time out of your busy schedule to learn about this incredible instructional strategy that could change the way you conduct your online class and the way you view teaching online altogether. But before we get started, you may be asking, but why should I listen to you, Kelly? Well, the answer is simple. I've been teaching full-time online for well over a decade at a four-year university. And I've implemented this strategy every single year during that time. As a result, I've done my own action research on this process. And I have the success stories from my own students, along with hundreds of recordings of the process as evidence of how well it works. I have experienced the good, the bad, and the ugly of facilitating courses in the virtual classroom, live and in person, and I would love nothing more than to share my experiences with you. You see, I truly believe that if you were to get excited about the LTVD and use it in your virtual classroom consistently, you would fall in love with it too. So go grab your favorite beverage and let's jump into this overview. I'd like to hold your ear for just a little while. Now, the first question you might be thinking or asking is, what is learning through virtual discussion and how did I come to use it in my online courses? Well, learning through virtual discussion is a cooperative learning strategy that was created and introduced by Dr. William Fawcett Hill in the 1960s. The strategy, which includes eight steps, was specifically designed for instructors at colleges and universities who sought to include thoughtful discussion groups into their pedagogy. I was first exposed to the process of learning through discussion as a graduate student in 2000 at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. I recall it being a novel, refreshing way to discuss our assigned readings. It pushed me to think way beyond those mundane critique the article assignments that I had completed as an undergraduate. The LTD required me to connect with the text in a personal way, and somehow the content became more relevant, more tangible, and more applicable. I began to see the author as a real person with thoughts and ideas, issues and concerns, leadership even, and purpose. Not only did I consider the author's intent for the very first time in my life, but I was also forced to see my classmates in a new light. The LTD managed to show me that my classmates possessed their own experiences, expertise, quests, and needs as it related to the subject matter we were reading. They, like me, had unanswered questions that were not addressed by the material, as well as strong or contradictory opinions about the author's perspective. The LTD provided the setting in which we could delve deeply into concepts that mattered to us as educators. Together, we could dissect the information and guide each other to a better understanding. This fascinating approach to cooperative, to cooperative, not cooperative, but cooperative learning has such an impact on me that as soon as I was given the opportunity to teach a course called Language and Literacy in Early Childhood Education and another course called Assessment and Evaluation in Early Childhood Education, online, I immediately toyed with the idea of using the LTD process that I had learned face-to-face to cover this content in an online course. I believed it to be the best way to ensure that my students took the time to absorb and to retain the enormous amount of information they would consume 
during the 16 weeks that I had their attention. In fact, to me, it was the only way. Again, I had the challenge, though, of trying to figure out how would I successfully facilitate this process virtually. What I can tell you is that somehow, some way, after many, many hours of thoughtful planning, weeks and weeks and weeks of on-the-job personal training, and semesters of strategic tweaking, the LTVD, that's learning through virtual discussion, process was born. I actually found a way to relocate the original process from the face-to-face format to the virtual classroom. Consequently, this new virtual context required that new procedures and subtle but necessary modifications be formulated and instituted to ensure the format success. And so your next question might be, well, Kelly, what are these eight steps to this process? I mean, eight might sound like a lot to you. But I'm going to give you these eight steps and not necessarily go into a lot of detail about what students do during those eight steps because at the end of this recording, I'm going to invite you to take advantage of my free mini course on the LTVD and also to purchase my book, which is a gift to you. And I want to share all of that in more detail when you have more time. So I'm just going to give you these eight steps very briefly. And then, of course, if you find interest in what you hear, you can de- delve a little bit deeper. All right, the eight steps are, number one, check-in and attendance. So my students log into the virtual classroom. Um, that's their very first step. And then the second step is vocabulary. The third step is a statement of the author's message. The fourth step is identification and discussion of major themes, topics, and subtopics. And also during this time, the students pose analytical questions to each other uh, where they're able to tap into their higher order thinking skills. In step five, they integrate and they apply material from other works that relate to whatever they're reading and whatever they're discussing. In step six, they apply the material to themselves. In step seven, they get to evaluate the author's presentation. And they get to scrutinize the author based on five areas that I have selected. And lastly, they evaluate their own performance as a group. So during this process, the students reflect on how well they implemented the process. And they get to identify their strong points as well as their areas that need improvement so that the next time they implement this process, they can actually do it even better. Now, I want to tell you what I love most about this process. I want to share with you why I think it's beneficial to instructors and also why I think it's so beneficial to distance learners. I'm a person who loves systems, or should I say organized methods of doing things. I've always been this way. When I first started teaching in 1994, I was fortunate to be trained by a wonderful curriculum coordinator at my school named Dr. Dottie Hall. And Dottie, as we endearingly called her, taught me how to implement balanced literacy in my classroom through a framework called the four blocks. I mean, I still get chill bumps when I think about it. Because once I learned how much time to devote to each block and how to facilitate learning within each block and how to just flow from one block to the next, I was on fire. Because imagine me as a brand new teacher, you know, taking all this book sense that I had learned in undergrad and trying to 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 perform and to implement that in the classroom. You kind of feel lost, but when you have a blueprint, when you have a system that you can follow, 
it's very easy for you to then plug into that system in the in the what you might think as confines or boundaries of that system because in that system you find your freedom you find your niche you find your way of doing things Teaching, reading, and writing became second nature for me. It was something that my students could plug into each and every day. And no matter what they were learning, it fit into this system called the four blocks. There was something about the familiarity of knowing the system while still having the freedom and flexibility to grow that was empowering for my little first and second graders, but also for me. Learning through virtual discussion provides that same kind of security, that same kind of consistency for instructors and for their students. There are eight steps, as I mentioned before, in this systematic way of discussing content. It does not matter what you choose to discuss, be it literature, a movie, a video, a webinar, anything, a poem, anything you choose to discuss, Those eight steps are the framework that guide the discussion. But even within the realm of those eight steps, every single person who dares gets the chance to shine, to bloom. And as they share their own ideas in a judgment-free zone with their peers, the engagement increases and their understanding deepens. As an instructor, I gift my students with this process to enhance their critical thinking skills, their interpersonal and intrapersonal skills, their communication skills, and even, get this, their study skills. Implementing good study skills is a major issue with our 21st century college students. But this particular process requires them to learn how to study in a different way. And it creates a discipline in them that nobody else could teach them, that they have to kind of learn on their own. My students benefit from growing in these areas, but they also get the opportunity to talk to real people about what they are learning, to gain different perspectives to share opposing views, to receive confirmations about what they already know, and they get to do it live, not behind the mysterious screen of a discussion board. They get to know their peers and develop a community, a real community of learners. They learn how to deal with people, to compromise, to listen actively, and to challenge what they thought to be true. It is a beautiful time of self-discovery that equips them for the career they have chosen, which requires them to participate in professional learning communities and to be team players for life. So now that I've shared this process with you and I got a little bit passionate, I can hear that you might be saying, well, Kelly, that sounds real good. But what goes wrong during this LTVD process? I mean, it is online, so it can't be 100% perfect, right? Well, anytime you're dealing with the Internet and people, there are things that can go wrong. So although this process is incredibly effective and beneficial for all involved, there are some challenges that you may have to overcome. Number one, even though you have high hopes that everyone will do his or her part and come to class prepared, being online and being face-to-face are no different in this area. There's always at least one group member or one person in a group uh, who's going to come to class knowing that they didn't pre- they didn't prepare, knowing they didn't read the material, and they haven't completed the process during their study time, and they want to fake it till they make it. And that person is clearly not equipped to contribute to the group in a positive way, and it becomes very obvious. Number two, students can have problems with technology. You will no doubt have students who may have issues with their headsets 
or with downloading the appropriate software or with understanding how to utilize the tools within the virtual classroom like the whiteboard or the chat box or even their microphones, you know, the audio system. And number three, there can be those who come to class with a negative vibe and can be disrespectful to their classmates. But let me tell you, after having taught for over two decades uh, in education in general and online for almost 15 years, you either have good classroom management skills or you don't. It does not matter whether you teach elementary school, middle school, high school, or college level students. If you put the proper procedures in place and you create an atmosphere where certain things are not tolerated or appreciated, you will find that very rarely will these things occur. Now, I've had to make some adjustments and some changes to the LTD process, as I mentioned earlier, to create the LTVD process. And because this strategy was originally created for a face-to-face engagement, face-to-face discussion among students, you know, I, I did a lot of tweaking and it took some time for me to figure this out. My students enter a virtual classroom, so I had to create procedures about how that was going to be done. I created expectations for what is to be done during the 10 to 15 minutes before a session begins, all the way through the two-hour session that my students are together. So let me explain. My students actually come to class every single week within our uh, 16-week semester. Well, let me take that back. I actually start the process after the third week of class. So let's give or take a holiday or two. Let's say they implement this, this process for about 13 weeks. 12 to 13 weeks, okay? And so I have mapped out between 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. is when my students have class. So within that two-hour time, I have mapped out for them pretty much with these eight steps what they're supposed to do before the session begins, before those those eight steps begin, and how they close out their session, what they do after the session ends. I mean, it's all mapped out. I utilize the group roles, um, which is something that if you you know anything about cooperative learning, uh, you have group roles. Now, group work is totally different from cooperative learning, but that's another audio for another day. But within cooperative learning, you're going to have group roles. So I utilize group roles. They're very, very important for the uh, success of this process. Um, And I make sure that those roles were fitting for the online experience. And then also, after they get off, off um, line and they have a they ha- they have to do something for me they have to publish something so I have a publishing process that shows me a written product of what they discussed I also created units of study in which the content that was being read and discussed centered around specific student learning outcomes every three to four weeks. And so I found that the students actually master the student learning outcomes because after having had discussions about different uh, content related to those outcomes, they began to gain understanding. And so using thematic units or units of study within this process, I have found to be very effective. And the students really enjoy it. They're able to make sense of that syllabus with all those student learning outcomes that we have listed that most of us didn't even read probably when we were undergraduates. They began to internalize those because they have to during this um, eight-step process. Specific procedures were put in place to ensure that the weight was carried equally from week to week as students in my courses implement this process during the entire semester, as I mentioned earlier. So, for example, I created a rotation process so that one or two students were not stuck always assuming the roles that require more leadership and thus more responsibility. You know, when you're in a group uh, uh, environment in college, there's always those one or two people who kind of do everything 
or there's always those those people who always kind of sit to the back and kind of not contribute well that can't happen in the way that I have organized this rotation process in the LTVD so many modifications were made and I lay them out for you in my book and I really help you to learn them um, in my LTV TVD uh, courses that I have online now if you're very skeptical about this process I want to talk to you bring your ear closer <laughs> let me be honest I am not a fan of the discussion board activities that are often required of online students where a prompt is posted and the students have to respond by a certain time and then they have to respond to a certain number of classmates at a certain time I can't stand that and I know that that's a very prevalent instructional strategy that is used in distance education it's a way of saying we don't have class but we're having class and it's on demand it's convenient for you but I'm gonna tell you how many people to respond to and then I'm gonna evaluate the quality of your responses I think it's a poor substitution for an exchange of ideas but even if I love the discussion board activities, I would tell anyone that talking live to people is superior to that method. Think about all the social media platforms that, that have added live streaming video as an option. You got Facebook Live. Instagram has live video. You have Periscope. You have YouTube even that has live video. Live interaction is incomparable. And that is why learning through virtual discussion, meeting in the virtual classroom, a time where students actually get to commu communicate with real people, hear their voices, and, and not have to really kind of interpret it, interpret what they have written on a, on a stale <laughs> discussion board forum, but they can hear their tone, they can ask the, the student questions right then about what they said, ask them to explain, to go into more detail, they can get to know each other. They get to communicate with their peers. And, and so I would just say to you, just try it. Just try it. It will amaze you as your students take ownership of their learning and actually run their own learning experience with minimal interference from you. Let me tell you, when I taught elementary school the first six weeks um, of my class I called it boot camp because that was the time when I taught my students procedures how to do something um, where they're supposed to get supplies if they need to go to the bathroom what they do I taught them how we you know head our paper this is how we clean up our centers I taught them I mean I we went over it and over it and over it and over it again until they could do it like clockwork till I could stand outside my classroom and watch them go they could come in in the morning and they would do something called a work sequence and they could come in in the morning and go bam 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 right through that work sequence my substitute teachers would come in they would be a amazed my principals would come in and they would be amazed because like I told you before if you have good classroom management it doesn't matter what age you teach and that is how it is with the LTVD once you set a standard and you do the proper training which I do teach you in my online courses but once you do the proper training and give your students the opportunity to get acclimated with the process before you implement it and give them some leeway those first three or four weeks that they do implement it my oh my they take ownership of their learning they run that discussion like clockwork you will grow as a facilitator you will grow as an observer you will even grow as an assessor an evaluator as a teacher and even though some of your students may be terrified about engaging in the process online and some may even be annoyed in the end they will thank you take it from someone who has been doing this for over 10 years they will thank you and they will appreciate the learning process 
In fact, if you go over to my LinkedIn page and you click on, I have a, a, a post there uh, called Confirmation from Miss Mary and listen to her testimonial about the course. In fact, you know what I do? At the end of the courses where I implement the LTVD, I have my students to, if they want to, they can leave some guidelines, some suggestions, some tips for future students on a course comment line. And I, t- I tell you right now, I have so many testimonials from students who, t- who will say, whoo, this process was so hard for me at the beginning. Um, but I learned so much. I learned so much by the end of the semester. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And I feel empowered to go out into the world and teach. Go out into the world and pursue my profession because I have the necessary skills. So I want to thank you for listening to my overview of this incredible instructional strategy. And I invite you to download my free mini course on the LTVD and to get your very own copy of Learning Through Virtual Discussion, the blueprint for creating dynamic synchronous discussions online. And if you are a fellow higher educator, I wish you well as you serve your students and passionately create dynamic learning communities online. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.